In today's video, we are going to be talking about five little-known pirate stories about some of the most famous and prolific pirates throughout history. Number one. Legendary and ruthless sea raider Black Bart may win the award for the most prolific pirate. With more than 400 ships reportedly falling to his sword in the early 18th century, but Bart was much more civilized than history would have you believe. The Welsh-born Bartholomew Roberts sounds less tough now, doesn't he? Always wore a damask waistcoat, snappy breeches, and a dashing red feather in his cap. The refined Bart also drank only tea and water, commanded lights out by 8 p.m., and had musicians play hymns for him on Sundays. Number two. Grace O'Malley was an Irish-born sea queen of the 16th century, earning her sea legs as a kid on voyages with her father. O'Malley went on to lead a crew of 200 sailors as part of her Celtic Sea Protection Service. Her specialty? Intercepting merchant ships to negotiate their safe passage to Galway and ruthlessly pillaging any uninterested customers. Infamous for being lewd, gambling too much, and cussing like, well, a sailor, O'Malley truly proved her mettle when she gave birth mid-voyage. Soon after the delivery, however, Turkish pirates attacked the ship, and when the flailing crew came running to O'Malley, she reportedly snapped, May you be seven times worse off this day, twelve months from now, you who cannot do without me for a day. When the postpartum Hellraiser finally emerged on deck waving her gun, the attackers quickly remembered they had other engagements. Number three. When pirate icon Edward Blackbeard Teach met his Waterloo at Ocracoke Island, which was his pillaging hub off the coast of North Carolina, in 1718, his enemies confiscated 25 hogshead of sugar, 145 bags of cocoa, a barrel of indigo, and a bale of cotton. Not exactly the sacks full of rubies and sapphires the British Royal Navy was hoping for. When asked where the real treasure was, it said he replied, Only I and the devil know. Since that time, beachcombers have donned Hawaiian print shirts and scoured the Carolina coast with metal detectors. Most likely in vain, Blackbeard's treasure is almost certainly more legend than fact. Pirates usually acquired their pieces of eight, which were Spanish silver coins, gold doubloons, and pricey jewels from black market trade of the coffee, tea, slaves, textiles, and medicines they stole from ships. But for all the talk of buried treasure, Pirates weren't known for their retirement planning. They usually blew the money on women, booze, and gambling. Number four. Our modern day image of the pirate usually comes outfitted with a peg leg, an eye patch, and a parrot. Why? The stereotype comes directly from the fictional character of Long John Silver in Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. Silver's feathered sidekick, Captain Flint, was a nice touch, but it's doubtful that pirates had pets. With long voyages and scanty rations, a parrot would have made a better snack than a companion. Number 5. Coming to a more recent story, the Pittsburgh Pirates haven't always been named after the thieves of the high seas. Originally, the Major League Club was known as the nature-loving Pittsburgh Alleghenies, after the mountain range in eastern Pennsylvania, but in 1880, after stealing away second baseman Louis Bierbauer from the Philadelphia Athletics, a local newspaper called the team a bunch of pirates. This suited them just fine, and they've been flying the Jolly Roger ever since. Number 6. Now before we get to the last story of a pirate named Jack, why don't you take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button down below and be sure to hit the bell so that way you're notified of any new videos that come out on the channel. This is the legend of Drunken Jack, as told by Captain Mac Oliver. 
In the early 1600s, bands of pirates and plunderers roamed the open seas, but the most famous scourge of them all was Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. Now, Blackbeard's ship stopped on a small island off of Merrill's Inlet to unload and bury a surplus of hijacked rum. The pirates buried all but a few of the dozen casks on the island and then enjoyed a feast of oysters and shrimp washed down with gallons of rum. After a night of wild and riotous boozing, the crew all fell into a drunken stupor and slept the night away. The next morning they sailed forgetting about a crewman named Jack, who was still sleeping off his massive hangover. Eventually, Jack was missed, but in the heat of a running battle, the ship moved far into the Caribbean, and there was no chance to go back and pick him up. It was two years before the ship made its way back to the little island off the coast of South Carolina to recover its valuable rum cargo and Jack. The crew found 32 empty casks of rum scattered up and down the beach and over by the edge of the myrtle and palmetto scrubs, the bleaching bones of old Jack, hence the name Drunken Jack's Island. 